Hi everyone, welcome back to Old Time Rock and Roll. I'm your host, David Tear, where I've been featuring my personal top 3,000 songs of the rock era from 1954 to 1999. Today I'm up to song number 2824, and that one is Shooby Dooby Doo Da Day by Stevie Wonder. Um, this came out in 1968. I'm not sure which album this was released on, but uh, it was when he was uh, recording with Motown. I think you guys all know who Stevie Wonder is. He's one of the most famous singers of all time. I think he's also one of the most influential artists of all time. Uh, I'm going to go through his history and his discography. He was born in 1950 in Saginaw, Michigan. And he was born blind, blind practically since birth. And that's why he wears these dark glasses. And uh, um, the only other blind musician, I guess I guess I can think of a couple other really great blind musicians, uh, Ray Charles and uh, um, Jose Feliciano. And I think there's there's really something to uh, what they say about, you know, if, if, uh, if one of your senses is missing, your other ones become more enhanced. Because... I mean, Stevie Wonder, he has about the greatest music sense of just about anyone I know. I mean, I just, I'm just very, very moved by his music. You can tell, and just the, the joy he uh, projects in his singing, and, and just how masterful a musician he is. Uh, really amazing. I actually saw him in concert once. I saw him at the Taste of Chicago. It was a free concert in Grand Park in the late 80s, and it was really a privilege to hear him. There was a huge crowd, about 50,000 people. I couldn't really see his face. It was so crowded, but they had his face projected on a giant monitor, so I got to see him on that. And I really enjoyed his singing, uh, as you can imagine. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, yeah, this is a picture of him from the 70s. He, he did a lot of different kinds of music. Too. I mean, he started as a soul musician. Uh, his first big hit was called Fingertips. I guess it was a two-part song, parts one and two. But that was also his first number one. And he was only 12 years old when he recorded it. And I believe he recorded it at the Apollo Theater. And he just bring, brought the house down. And he actually had a whole album. I think it was called a 12-year-old uh uh, Stevie Wonder or the Wonder Kid. Uh, I don't know exact title, but he he was a wonder. I mean, amazing for a twelve year old kid. I guess he was sort of like the Michael Jackson of his day, but not as weird. But anyway, you know, he was an amazing artist, and uh, you know, he started out with Motown. He had several big Motown classics early on. After I guess his next big hit was until nineteen sixty six. That was uptight. Uh, I'm just going to go through his top tens. He had dozens of hits, just dozens of top tens even. Uh, his his next was Uptight, like I said, that went to number three, Uptight, Everything's All Right. Uh, he also had a remake of Blowing in the Wind, which of course was a Bob Dylan um, tune. Uh, that went to number nine. Uh, and he had another song called A Place in the Sun, the same year, also went to number nine. In 67, he had a song called I Was Made to Love Her, which went to number two. In 68, he had the song I'm featuring today, Shooby Dooby Doo Da Day, which went to number nine as well. Uh, he also had a song called For Once in My Life. I believe that was also a remake. I don't know who did the original, but his version went to number two. Uh, 69, he had a beautiful song called My Sharia Amour, which went to number four. He also had a hit called Yester Me, Yester You, Yesterday, which went to number seven. And then I think in the 70s, like a lot of other artists at the time, he kind of went through a, a metamorphosis. He got more into kind of funk, I guess. He started, you know, he started as a soul and R&B musician. And then by the 70s, I think he moved more towards kind of funk and mellow, uh, I don't know what you call it, maybe mellow jazz. But his next big hit was in 1970. It was called Sign, Seal, Deliver, and I'm Yours. That went to number three. He also had a song called Heaven Help Us All, which went to number nine. 71, he had a duet. I can't remember who the woman was who sang it with him, but it was called If You Really Love Me, and that one went to number eight. And then in 73, he had a second number one uh, called Superstition. He actually had two number ones in 73. His first was Superstition. His second was You Are the Sunshine of My Life. And then he also had another hit that year, or a couple others. He had Higher Ground, which went to number four. 
and Living for the City, which went to number eight. In 74, he had another number one called You Haven't Done Nothing. Uh, he also had a song called Boogie On Reggae Woman, which went to number three. In 76, he had another number one called I Wish. Actually, like two number ones. Well, he had one in 76 called I Wish. And then in 77, he had uh, Sir Duke. That was a follow-up hit that went to number one. Both of these were on the same album, Songs in the Key of Life. I used to own this album. Pretty good album. But those were the two number one songs on that album. Uh, also had another excellent song on that album called Isn't She Lovely. But I don't think that one was released as a single. And by the way, Isn't She Lovely was a song about his newly born daughter at the time, Aisha. Uh, and you, in the long version, you hear you hear a baby crying at the beginning. It's a pretty beautiful song. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, I didn't even know it was about his baby when I first heard it, but it's a very nice song. Unfortunately, it wasn't a hit. Uh, 79, he had his next top 10 called Send One Your Love. It went to number four. In 1980, he had a reggae song called Master Blaster or Jammin'. I believe that was a celebration of the uh, independence of Zimbabwe. That one went to number five. In 81, he had a hit called That Girl, not to be confused with the TV show from the 60s starring Marl Thomas. Pretty dumb show, but no, he had a song called That Girl, which went to number four. In 84, he, uh, 82, actually, he had a duet with, uh, with Paul McCartney, which is one of my favorite of his songs, maybe my favorite. It was called Ebony and Ivory. Uh, excellent song. That one's much coming much, much higher on my list. I'm not going to say how high. But that was another number one song. In 84, he had another number one called I Just Called to Say I Love You. Uh, in 85, he had his last number one called Part-Time Lover. Also his last top 10 called Go Home. So amazing, amazing artist. Just uh, very prolific and very uh, influential. And I think one of the greatest uh, artists of the rock era. So anyway, it was my pleasure to feature him today and also to feature his uh, song uh, um, uh, Shooby Dooby Doo Da Day. And by the way, I have 20 of his songs on my list. He's one of the biggest artists on my list. This is the last. Of them. So you're going you're gonna to see me feature a lot more Stevie Wonder songs, including many of the ones I just mentioned. But anyway, that's my profile on Shooby Dooby Doo Da Day by Stevie Wonder. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. You guys rock, and I'll see you guys next time.